Now that we've set up our group list, we're ready to work with the other inventory module functions. Inventory module is found from the inventory drop-down box where we can look up inventory with inquire edit, we can add inventory, we can do a receive of parts, or create a purchase order. Also available here is our core return tracking system and our review count sheet function for inventory audits. We're going to go through and the process of adding a piece of inventory to the Yes system. So I'm going to do that by clicking on the Add Inventory option on our drop-down menu. And this brings up an empty inventory maintenance screen. Now the very first most basic thing we have to do is assign our inventory group to this piece of inventory. Now if I know the group number I can just type it in here or I can click the button with the three dots and it'll open up the list so that I can find it. So let's say we're going to go ahead and add an oil filter. I've put in the group code of 710 and it's checked our group list and brought in the default description as well as that under the hood accounting information we set up for that group. So that all I really need to put in are the manufacturer line code or part number. Um, I'd like to stop here on MFG code here. Um, this is not necessary but if you are using our Activant catalog to match parts to Activant catalog lookups, you're going to want to establish a line code to make sure that you're bringing up the correct part that you are trying to put onto the ticket. The part number though is the key piece of information to establishing it. I'm going to create a part number here of PF116 and then hit enter and I can then go through and put in other information about this piece of inventory so that I can help uh, our parts manager better control and uh, monitor this piece of inventory. Now I want to go over some of the key fields as part of that inventory item uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just click save right here and that cues me up so that I could add another oil filter but I'm not going to do that right now I'm just going to hit cancel but I want to look up that piece of inventory we just added by going to inventory inquire edit and I'm going to um, look up that part. Now I can look it up by uh, a variety of methods. I can just type in a partial part number, hit PF and then hit enter and it'll bring anything that matches that. And I'll go ahead and do that and hit enter and zoom in on it. I could have also typed in the group code 710 and it would have brought anything that matches 710 including those oil filters. Now looking at our inventory detail screen, there's a lot of fields I'm not using here and I'd like to explain some of them to you and you can make a decision about what extent you're going to use them. Now the first field we have here is the location field and this relates to the location in your parts room where this piece of inventory is going to be housed. Um, you might want to give consideration to organizing your part room by standardized descriptions like aisle 5, bin 3, uh, whatever is appropriate and that allows you to actually do inventory audits by location and you can do rolling audits um, every other day uh, to do your full inventory audit and that way it doesn't take as much time. The second field here would be the primary vendor code. If you purchase this part primarily from Napa you can put in their vendor code and that allows you to do restock orders in conjunction with our reorder quantities uh, so that you can say I'm going to do a NAPA order and if that part has then met the criteria of your reorder point configuration it will then automatically include itself in that purchase. The next field to uh, point out here is the on hand quantity and this would be how many you have in the shop right now. The committed field will show you how many of this piece of inventory are currently billed out on pending service orders. So your availability is going to be the on hand minus the committed for any further use of that part on another ticket. On order amount would be however many pieces of this inventory item are currently on an outstanding purchase order that has not been received yet. 
The next two fields are the alt name 1 and alt name 2 fields and these represent alternative search methods by which you could bring up this part. I see this commonly used with uh, superseded part numbers. If a part number is changed you can record its previous part number in the alt name field so that if you look up the piece of inventory by the old name it'll bring up the new field or the new part number and vice versa. The link to field allows you to sell another part number in equal quantities to the part number that you would be billing out on the ticket that has that link to. So let's say we had a part number for a tire and we always wanted to sell a valve stem with that tire. If you put the valve stem part number in the link to field of the tire, then you can then sell two of that tire and you'll sell two valve stems. You can also create a chain of selling a link to item which sells another link to item which sells another link to item. And in the example of a tire, we'd have a tire where you'd want to sell a valve stem and then maybe you want to sell a mountain balance uh, tire labor operation and then you want to sell a tire tax uh, or road hazard. You can have the one item linked to the other item linked to the other item so that as far as your service register is concerned, he puts four tires on a ticket and it sells four of those other things down the line. Very, very nice feature. Next two fields to point out here are going to be last cost and average cost. Last cost would be how much you paid for it the last time you bought it, and the average cost would be the average cost of the current on hand quantity based off of the purchase history of that on hand quantity. So that if you purchased five of them at $3 and then uh, another five at $4, you would have uh, 10 of them on hand, but you would have an average cost each of $3.50. Now I want to point out the quantities button here because that relates to the vendor code um, as the primary vendor code in restock orders. Under quantity information we have those same on hand committed and on order but we also have our reorder points minimum on hand, maximum on hand, and lot amount and they represent the reorder point and the restocking level. So if I say, if I get down to four of this part, I want to order up to a certain quantity. In this case, I'll say 10. So if we get to four uh, available for this piece of inventory and then do a restock order, it's going to want to purchase however many necessary, it's, uh, however many units is necessary to achieve this max on hand. Now the lot amount field allows you to specify an item that's purchased in quantity um, so that if you get four of those per package you can put four here and again if it reaches its reorder point it'll order as many packages as necessary so that your on hand quantity is met, your max on hand. I'll go ahead and click save.